variations on our printed program. And for those of you about to um, speak, uh, just a reminder or two to do best to combine your remarks to three to five minutes so that we can honor um, everybody today. Um, so entertaining Eileen <coughs> Stanley, of course, died um, last year as well, and Tom T. will tell us more. Anyway, <laughs> he was born Stark, Stanley, Martin Lieber in Manhattan, New York, on December 28, 1922. But we all knew him as Stan Lee. In a very real sense, Stan was the seminal reason why we find ourselves gainfully employed in this current renaissance of the animation of the animation industry. Without Stan's Marvel comic creation and his promotion of comic books into cultural juggernauts, it is hard to argue that our business would be where it is today. See, Stan took comic books from the ghetto of being cheap, low-brow versions for kids. He elevated these disposable pulp magazines into a phenomenon that reached all ages, legitimized the genre as serious popular culture. With fellow collaborators, he created many of the characters that now dominate today's cinematic landscape, characters whose names are iconic, all well known worldwide as any ever created. The new, the new mythologies of our age Spider Man, Iron Man, The Hulk, The Avengers, and more. Many more. We all know them, everybody does. But what made these characters truly significant were not those names. They were the names Peter Parker, Bruce Banner, Ben Grimm, Tony Stark. Stan to see these heroes to be fallible beings, individuals with real life problems that audiences and readers could relate to. He changed comic book characters from being simple, cardboard figures of muscle-bulging heroism. He formed them into fully realized, rounded, and identifiable human beings. He made them people, people like us. But, back to why we understand we here today. Simply put, for, the first time, for virtually the first time in the history of comics, Stan gave credit to those who, worked with it, who, who he worked with as significant contributors. The anonymity surrounding those who created the comics we read and loved was thus lifted. These co-creators became known to all. Artists and writers became stars, even letterers and colorists. They were no longer faceless and nameless. Their talents were given their due. They became the heroes that many of us aspired to be, as, uh, every bit as much as we wish to be the comic book characters themselves. But these were heroes who could actually become, again, people like us. Stan helped provide the inspiration for many of us to follow our creative and aspirational muses, to work as artists and writers. If not in comics, then in the animation industry. That also includes those of us who work in the craft end of the industry, colorists, checkers, and others. Whether someone likes comics or not, we have all benefited from the explosion of animation employment that started in the 1980s. This was the result of the burgeoning of popular culture, dovetailing with the unparalleled popularity of comics and animation's reemergence as a high profile entertainment and economic force. All do, in no small part, to stand tireless crusading of comics and be considered, being considered a significant popular culture art form. So, when Marvel went into animation, Stan moved into the role of producer. As a result, many of us found and continue to find ourselves lending our abilities to realize Stan's characters in their journeys from the printed page to the TV and movie screen. We all became participants in the creation and telling of stories to millions of viewers, young and old, and in between. Just as Stan and his teams had formed us, we now help form the lives of countless young people. A pretty damn good way to make a living. I first met Stan when I was creative executive producer at Marvel Animation. There, I had the privilege of working with him in the mid to late 19, 1990s in the second seasons of Fantastic Four and Iron Man, as well as The Incredible Hulk. This is where I got to know Stan as a person, not simply as an icon. He did not disappoint. Stan was accessible and energetic, available with critical input and insight into the characters and stories to help keep them on track and true to his original creative vision. Always pleasant and accommodating, Stan would graciously make trips over to the studio to happily sign memorabilia for the crew whenever asked. When the initial animation came in of main title sequences for shows, Stan was the first to want to come and see him. To this day, his excitement and sincere compliments were a true highlight of my career. 
can then make it a point to go to the studio and visit and congratulate the crew. I was astonished by the sheer energy and enthusiasm when I also directed them in the live action intro to some of the shows. Stan, then in his mid-70s, easily sustained to a long day of shooting. He was unique. In subsequent years, Stan formed various family productions and created other animated properties outside of the Marvel Universe. He was also involved as executive producer in numerous live action projects. He even became a beloved figure with his always eagerly anticipated cameos in the Marvel films that dominate the current culture worldwide. What else can I say? Stan was a giant. But, in the final analysis, Stan was one of us. Someone who loved the mediums he worked in. Someone who created characters and stories that formed generations and would continue to do so in the future. So, I do, Stan. The world is incalculably richer for your having been here. As we are for knowing you and sharing in your, in your imagination and the world you created. Not a bad legacy for a simple comic book writer from New York. So, as Stan would undoubtedly have said at this point, enough said.